Hmm. Selamat petang. Good evening, everyone. Yes, good evening, everyone. So good to be back. For those yep. of you who are already tuned in, jangan malu-malu. Let us know who you are. We'll mm-hmm. say hi. Just want to know who is already yes. tuned in. No? Hi. Oh, Chris. Very personalized uh, greetings, huh? Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> As usual, uh, huh, Chris? It's just standard already, man. You know, uh, if one week I don't have Chris, I'm like, I'm going to get Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, yeah. Lah. so it's 8 o'clock already. We are okay. going to get off, okay? So uh, let us know who you are, and we'll just go for our countdown, and we'll be right back in just a bit. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, for yes. tonight's uh, broadcast. Uh, it's nice to have uh, some of you here already tuning in. I know there are already people already want, and Chris clearly is one of them uh, watching us yes. from YouTube. Apa kabar? Hello, Hi, Chris. Usually, lay. This kind of uh, broadcast, eh, whenever I'm around, it's with uh, Eric. But Eric, he is taking a back seat. Just dang uh, bermalas. Okay lah, let him chill. So, oh, huh? mm-hmm. we import one, uh, one Thailo here, all the way from Perth. Huh? So, yeah. yeah lah. He got to down under. Uh, kangaroo, kangaroo. Yeah, from down under here. So, uh, malam ni. What's that? We do not talk about this. You know, in yes. huh? Hello, Prima. Oh, Prima is here. Yes, mm. seriously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's probably referring to the intro and all the background noises. Yes, yes. Right? No- annoying, right? It's mm. entertainingly annoying. But anyway, mm. that's the point. Right? Social etiquette, pet peeves and annoyances is what we're going to be exploring tonight. Uh, we're going to be uh, discussing and trying to uh, discover what are yours, you know, what bothers you up there, you know, really rubs you off the wrong way. And then, you know, we're just going to develop uh, the conversation. We have a few guided topics along the, uh, the way just to uh, understand why are we doing this tonight? Why are we talking about pet peeves? Why want to make people angry here? You know, ah, ada punya, ada sebabnya. Okay. Hello. Okay, what's Rina. The boss is watching us. Okay. Yes. This one of the yes. we are working. Kita kerja punya. Okay. So yeah. she she, she got she got her her, her checklist that she's ticking off. God. So nah, I must wave. I must wave. I must wave. <laughs> smile more. Smile more. Yes. Yeah, smile more. Yeah. Yes. 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 Right. So, uh, what are the things that uh, bothers you? Okay. Pertaining to tonight's uh, uh, topic, drop in your comments. We're gonna visit them and address them in due time. But until then, we are going to be uh, announcing uh, something that is going to be taking place over here. Okay. So, Bossa, what do you think uh, of this little poster here? Uh? You want to announce? Uh? You see this floor? Wow. <laughs> The Lord's Masterclass. Yeah, wow. This must not to be missed, uh, Evanda. Yeah, the Lord speaking, delivering <laughs> impressive presentation. Oh. And there you go. Tris yeah. also say with that muka, yes. ayo. Oh. Very serious, lah. You better sign up, lah. 
I know uh, exactly what Jimmy uh, means it. But anyway, jokes aside, all right. So uh, Eric is a doctor, okay, clearly. So he is a communication skills uh, lecturer as well, uh, who is uh, lecturing at uh, IMU. And uh, this is one of his uh, fortes where he's also able to guide on how to uh, deliver impressive presentations, all right? So consider this, it's happening virtually this Wednesday from 8.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. but with a fee of a 100 ringgit per pack, okay? So for those of you who are interested to sign up, uh, get in touch with us or even drop in the comments or better still, just uh, go and to choke that goodie lah, that Eric yeah. and him and all that, right? Yes. And if I that goodie, let him work long, huh? mm -hmm. So uh, money well we have, spent. Money well spent. Ringgit with money well spent. You yeah. will be okay. So yes. it's all for you to uh, take yes. home some learnable values. Yes. The, uh, the multiplier uh, factor is definitely there. Correct. So yes. Tyler, hello. Ha. We already have some pet peeves coming in already. Okay. We posted here. We're gonna address the real quick. quick. Sharon, hi Sharon. Oh. Come here, come here. Thank you so much for joining. And so Sharon was asking uh, earlier, is there seats in the Any seats enough? Well? Yes. Told her that it's virtual tonight. So just come, yes. come on. Grandpa, are you? Sling, what are there? Hmm. Okay lah. He's, he's not denying it. He's embracing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The alpha Very grandpa. Fun. All right. Hmm. So. Yeah, some of our regular friends who always tune in here. So uh, before we uh, proceed, as usual, we are going to just uh, uh, introduce uh, what Sarong Sleepers is all about. We're going to be queuing in our intro. Okay, so we'll be right back. Uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yep. Um, so again, revisiting tonight's uh, topic, all right, it is social etiquette, uh, pet peeves versus annoyances, mm. all right, I'm pretty sure all of us have our own unique one. What are some of yours? We really have the first one here, Selena. Mm. Yeah. Wait, we lost Yatong. Yatong, don't leave me. What happened? <laughs> Did you... I'm going to text him. Yatong. Come back! Did you just accidentally click exit and he bail on me? Oh my goodness! Get on, come back! <laughs> click back the link in your email. Anyway, uh, he's gonna come back anyway. Otherwise, uh, we're just gonna carry on here. So as uh, uh, Selena just uh, mentioned, okay, her one of her pet peeves is uh, pens picking. I can kind of relate the annoyance of it it doesn't really rub me off that badly but it is annoyance to a certain extent lah. you know it's like you know hurry hurry clicking okay i can't click with this because this is a twist pen it's a hotel pen not a free advertising but it's from a hotel i saw that <laughs> right but yeah you can even like click 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 it's like the very very Mumbabi, right? I mean, sometimes, especially in public spaces, man. We have Yat Tong back here. I thought you built on me. You accidentally yeah. is it yes. right? Talking about pen clicking, ah. Uh, ah, there you I go. There you one... go. Can you do it? Can I saw. It? I saw one presentation by a presenter. He has a set of keys in his pocket. Hmm. And you know, when and... he was nervous, you know what he do. Wait. He put his hand into the pocket and he play with his keys. And then got clinking sound and all that. That was the center of attraction. Yes. Play with keys so everybody play, but... was looking at, you know, uh, the <laughs> centerpiece. Uh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And it, it creates imagination. Were, were, were they yes. the keys? Was yes. it keys that he's playing with or something else? Yeah. Yes. And suddenly that was the highlight of the presentation. Best luck. Best luck. Yes. All right. Yes. So, uh, 
Oh, we have a few uh, visitors coming as well. Muzil, apa khabar? Dah lama, never see you around. Yeah, because, Muzil. Uh, macam, mm. hey, you jangan lah, uh, you datang first comment sudah cucuk tau. Correct, If, correct, he don't. Huh? Different oh. generations lah, apa ni? Yeah. Mm. So, mm. correct, he don't. Correct, he don't in public spaces lah, right? Mm. So, mm. yeah, it's quite unsightly. Okay? Mm-hmm. And, uh, After correct, correct, there, and then he twang like this, okay, some more. Wow. You know, it's funny thing that I used to do that as well as a kid. In fact, my grandfather, he used to uh, uh, play with me and he taught me how to flick boogers, but he's got a rule, mm. only the dry ones, not the wet ones mm. anyway. So, uh, yeah. And Chris, eating and chewing without their mouths closed. Yeah, it's quite unsightly, oh, isn't it? You get yes. to see the stuff in your mouth, yes. especially yes, the yes, noise. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Mm. So, Clearly, there are some of the uh, annoyances that we uh, can already tell that what rubs off mm. some of our friends uh, tonight. But let's mm-hmm. visit first. Etiquette versus manners. Uh, I actually received some comments uh, or some messages. Uh, what's the difference? How can we differentiate you know, between these two? So, uh, what do you think, everyone who was watching tonight, uh, is the difference between these two? While we wait for the comments from any of our viewers, Yatong, what do you think? Do you think there's a difference or it's similar? Same, same, but different. Same, same, but different. Yes. 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 Okay. Why same, same? Why different? eh? What what do you think in your own words? I think etiquette is something that is uh, sort of expected in a social... uh, uh gathering or environment like when we were when i was in my cadetship you know we were taught how to have social etiquettes uh when you're on the table you know when you drink up your drink your spoon yeah your soup you know it should be square and when the last scoop of your of, of your soup you're supposed to mm. dip the uh what they call the plate the soup plate upward and not inward Ah. Keep it outward, and then you scoop, and then square. Why oh, do so you it's think? Not, not like that. No. So it's like no. that. Yes. So you scoop it out. What's the reason why we scoop it out? Any idea? I I've heard of the scooping in and scooping up before, but I never uh, wrap around my head, you know, about it. So no. Why are scooping out so that so that you don't spill your clothing? Your suit. Although you may have your 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 what I call napkin yeah, yeah. on top. Okay. Yes. So it still doesn't dirty. So you scoop out. So that is how it should be scoop out. And then it's a square. Why do you do think we need to do a square? Why? Ah, uh, a bit bodo. This. <laughs> Instead of going straight, so you go up. You just like. Manners, so it's a social etiquette, and with the manners, and then you mm. drink your soup. Mm. Marriage so, between the two. Oh, Thaila, can't you say? Oh, Thaila. Uh. So, so it, it, it's clearly so the scooping out. It's uh, what is it? Is a table etiquette, so to speak, but yes, it has got a practical etiquette. reason behind yes. it, so it. Yes, right? yes, yes. And then of course, and, and you then of slip. course, uh, of course, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so menace, lah, huh? yes 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 okay. yeah right. and of course like when we uh we see ladies we are expected to stand up until the ladies sit down and then only we yeah, sit yeah, down yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And yeah these are uh, social etiquettes and if you look at it it's part manner though you know that you have good manner you stand up so it's the it- social etiquette training that give you this uh manner that you, when you see a lady you stand up let the lady take her place when she sit down then you sit down only ladies ah jantan se no need jantan kalau dia besar lah <laughs> okay yeah. jantan senior, it, it, senior, i suppose seniors yeah. right yes. ranked officers yes yeah but us. i think among the the guys it's not so much uh outside of the military It's not so much a protocol as compared okay. to a lady. Yeah. Would, would it be better to 
uh, maybe label it as chivalry, especially when it involves ladies. You know, mm. would, would it be? Or, uh, I mean, chivalry is a, a whole different thing as well. You know, uh, yes, yes. Like, uh, getting the door for the lady, pulling out the mm-hmm. chair, uh, like what, what you said. You know, yeah. Uh, just be on our feet and let the lady uh, sit first before we we sit but ourselves. Ho- holding the the door for the lady can be a double edged weapon. <laughs> yes, ah. because some lady can say, mm, "I can do it myself." Woman's liberation. I can do it myself. I don't need your help. Don't yeah. treat me like I know I'm a, 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 a lesser sex that you have to open the door for me. I like yeah, to do yeah, it on yeah. my own. We are equal. So yeah, it's yeah. very cultural thing, you know, to, to to certain extent. Although it's a good value, but you know, there is this cultural dimension, you know, especially uh, in today's modern. Uh, settings yes. where we yes. talk about gender equality yes. and yes. empowering women. I yes. guess I get you. I get you. You see, like like I say, standing up for the, you stand up when the lady enter the room and things like that. That is a very British. In Japan, you don't see guys doing that. Uh, mm, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. Mm, not so common. Not so common until yeah. unless I think there are certain category, but not across. Yeah, I, I I experienced that uh, mm-hmm. uh, firsthand, you know, observing uh, what took place. Mm-hmm. So, okay, but coming back to oh, this, yeah. this has a good good question. Etiquette while wearing the uniform, the number one uniform. Oh yes, of course. Yes, yes. the medal. What's what's the number one uniform? Uh, number one uniform is actually the ceremonial dress. Ah, okay. Yeah. Mili- so right. uh, when you are. Uh, in I, I think it's not just number one uniform virtually when you are in any uniform you are representing the uniform you are wearing so there is always this social etiquette that's why mm-hmm. the other day i posted about you know getting a massage in the boardroom <laughs> okay yeah yeah for some of you who not know yeah they yes. check it out, right so. the, the chair a CEO sits on carries a lot of weightage in terms of image and culture of the organization. So whoever sits on that chair, you have to have certain etiquette. You have to have certain uh, bearings that project that sort of image rightful for the chair. It's mm. not just that you plunk yourself in and that's it, you know. No, mm. and of course, like wearing the number one uniform, there are certain things that we would always have to do. All right, the mm. way you walk, upright, straight, and um, when you see a fellow officers who are senior to you, you always give a salute, and when a junior officer give you a salute, you return the salute. Mm. Yeah, and when mm. you see a lady. As a guy, you always extend your hand first for a handshake. Mm. Yeah, and if you see the wife or fellow officers, also you extend your hand. And of course, mm. due to certain uh, religious requirements, or so now it's not so wide a practice that you extend your hand for a handshake. So normally, what we do is we put our hand on the on on the on the chest and take a you know slight bow. Oh, okay. when you're in. Uniform, you always let the lady walk first, and of course, only the VVIP, the guest of honor, will walk first, followed by the ladies. But the rest of the uh, officers, they will always let the lady go first, and then okay, the officers will follow. So understand again, etiquette. Yeah, understand. Yeah, fair enough. Mm-hmm. All right. So I hope uh, that uh, answers the question, Chris. But yeah, that's a very good question there. And um, so, going going back to the question, what's the difference between etiquette and uh, manners? And Yat Tong kind of just give a very uh, broad sense of the explanation of these two. Okay, so uh, etiquette is practically um, a set of uh, social norms expected, uh, uh, you know, by the society, a set of societal rules, lah. You know, an unwritten, unspoken rules, so to speak. Okay. Uh, and Yatong gave a, a, a pretty good examples earlier. Whereas, I uh, think another example is 
another example is when you're on the flight ah. you know and when there's yeah. an announcement for you to switch off your phone you follow the instructions switch it off yeah you know but you see you sometimes you see there are people who are still trying to call making call while the the the, the aircraft has already moved on to the runway ready to take off ah that so is a bit social etiquette means following that's, rules lah yeah that's pushing it uh. i mean i have to admit i have been guilty about that especially when it comes to a uh, certain set of work urgencies but all the way until the runway taxing out there no 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 even i wouldn't want to push the boundaries there lah <laughs> so no <laughs> Yeah, so that's etiquette. Yeah. Whereas manners, it could be uh, you know defined by the setting where you are. It could be table manners for all we know. But on the other hand, what, what we're trying to say is ma- manners are behaviors that uh, uh, is more definitive, reflecting a person's attitude, right? So that's something what I, we can differentiate. I qualified as manner applies to all ages. We teach our children manners, so it applies to all ages. Whereas etiquette is more professional setting, mm. Mm. you know. Okay. So apply to certain certain age group, you know. You don't right. expect to teach your that young kids, you know, about social etiquette. Yes, it's good to 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 drum into them, but it, I think it's more about manners that they are growing up. And from manners, can... then it's easier for for them to acquire yeah. social etiquette. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, I insist on my four-year-old, uh, especially when we come across friends or elderlies in our church. You know, it's like, hey, you know, uncle, auntie, you know, simple greeting, and even uh, at the uh, table uh, before meals, uncle tia, auntie tia, mm. simple little things are. You know, so there we go. Uh, etiquette versus manners, and But now... I like, I like, I, I would like to bring back to this. Uh... Ranuka's uh, comment: Ordering the yeah, most yeah. expensive dish in the menu. I think that was really good. When you are party, not the right? host, yes, yeah. and you also it's social social etiquette. Yes. It is, it is, it is. It, it's one of the yes. annoying things. But then again, I yeah. also encountered this as well. I, I was on the receiving end. Uh, clearly, I was the host. But sometimes, uh, uh, especially when it comes to uh, company punya makan, uh, yeah. and We still go out for food, right? For lunches with our colleagues, uh, our co-workers, right? Mm-hmm. So these are the times that's just regular uh, meals. So we buy a sendiri lah, right? But there, there are times as well where it's on the house, where it's uh, a treat by the company, right? So we have a certain allocated budget. Wow, tertiba, uh, you know, suddenly uh, uh, there'll be some characters who are actually ordering uh, the most expensive dish uh, on the menu. It's like, <sighs> anyway, it is what it is. Yeah. I can't blame them to a certain extent. It does get annoying, but at the same time, it also uh, made me realize, you know, it may not be uh, all the time he gets enjoy. Maybe he doesn't have the or, he, or she doesn't have the you know the opportunity to try. So it is what it is, law, right? So it depends on how privileged we are from different backgrounds. But Renoka hit the. Mm-hmm. Uh, a bullseye among the pet yes, peeves which yes. we're going to be covering up next what are yes. pet peeves right we uh, Renuka kind of already uh, explained it already so pet mm. peeves are practically uh, things that rubs us off the wrong way uh, something that annoys us okay and it's yes. very personal and individual so we have pen clicking you know which uh, Selena mentioned earlier mm. uh, stealing also say shaking legs la, mm. you know Mozilla earlier said got a hidon Chris mentioning about eating with the mouth mm. open you know chewing the noise mm. uh, yeah and we are going to be uh, focusing a uh, deeper because when it comes to pet peeves right or annoyances uh, there are many many aspects of it, of it depending on the setting that we're in the environment that we're in right yes. so let's go with this now for all the viewers who are with us tonight okay what's your worst one what rocks you off the worst so while we're waiting to hear from you we are going to share ours as well yeah talk honors is yours what's your worst if you have any What's your worst pet peeve? Pitching 
Pici every fruit in the supermarket. Oh yes. <laughs> Sharon, you're quick. Pici mm. and yeah, you know what? Betul lor. Yeah, mm. I do my groceries, so I also saw some fillers. Uh, oh, I want apple lah, uh, orange or whatever. Mango lah, uh, mango. Whatever lah, uh, you know, perfectly round. So Banana lah. Whatever lah. So yeah, what 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 Pitch it everything. Yes. So yes. that's yours, huh, Sharon. What about mm-hmm. yours, uh, Yatong? Oh, the worst for me is when I'm in China. Is always people jump queue. You queue up, and they just come in a slot in front of. And I always tell them, "Pai tui, lineman, pai tui." I just China cannot stand it. Wall. Yes, very frequent that I encounter people will just jump queue you know the queue is already there forming up and they were just coming and there was a slot in and the worst is one person queue for 10 person oh and when they, yeah. they open up the gate like, wow you suddenly from number two you become number 11. wow that one, one is definitely team. yes especially When you were in this uh, public place, you know, in um, uh, seeing shows or whatever. Oh, goodness! As long as a queue, ah, uh, wow! You try yes. doing that in uh, in Malaysia yes. or worse in Singapore. Our neighbors mm. are not going to tolerate that. I mean, I've seen. Yes. I personally have also told off someone. Hey, can you just get back to the queue? There's a queue here, obviously, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Online, right. So we are yeah, in so a queue. Cool. Please. So that's your worst mm. pet peeve, huh? Okay. Mm. Uh, I, I, what's yours? I find it hard to identify what's my worst pet peeve because there, there are many clearly, but mm-hmm. to identify it as one as being the worst, very hard, lah. Right? So maybe just the uh, I'll put it as these are some of the commonly occurring pet peeves that I encounter almost quite mm. frequently. Uh, when I'm on the road, driving long these days, mm. oh, there are a lot of things to talk about. In fact, it's one of one of our topics tonight. But these days, it's becoming so common that I find that the traffic lights being erected is mm. just for the sake of being a decoration instead mm. of mm. controlling the flow of traffic, in which yes. sequence of direction moves first. Bloody mm. shit! I tell you, buying my my French, but I, it's very stressful, you know. Especially when uh, it, when you the the first car in the front red light, then it turns green. You're supposed to go. Mm. I also will still uh, look around see if there's any, you know, some mostly motorcyclists that uh, will just mm-hmm. zong come out. Then wow, mm-hmm. you bang! It doesn't matter whether by law you're right or not. It's really mafia, mm. right? Yeah, so it's one of the, those that really. Uh, Challenges my my patience, uh, and sometimes I, I just don't want to get into the kind of incident. Uh, very mild, really. Uh, I yellow? I encounter this this pet peeve that I really uh, decided that's it. I was on a local tour, uh, in China, mm-hmm. in Suzhou. We joined a local tour because it so happened I was in 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 Suzhou, and that was mm-hmm. the first and the last time that I'm going to join a local tour. Why? Because during the uh, the lunch time, lunch hour, these China people they would scoop the rice, scoop all the vegetable onto the plate, without considering other people on the table. So by the time you know you think that okay lah, be a gentleman, we let them take their food first. So by the time it reaches you, can you imagine what's left? <laughs> And they yeah. scoop, like in a mountain, you know. Oh. Yeah. That yeah, I've seen very... that. I've seen that in person. I've also yes. seen that on social media. Uh, it has been covered before, you know. And yes. yeah, it's like wow, it's mm-hmm. really, yeah, uh, seriously. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's move on. All right. So how, how, yeah, how about how about you were in the in in the movie theater? Someone calling the friend, telling the story of whatever is he's watching together with you through the phone. <laughs> giving okay. a narrative oh, and so another one 
let's get into this uh topic right now right yes. so annoyances in public spaces oh my god there's many all right so yeah, uh, yes. we have some of our friends uh viewing and already uh dropping their uh, comments here and we've got a uh, uh, a viewer from brunei hi good evening hi v so nice to uh see you here with us thank you so much for dropping a comment letting us know who you are okay thank you much appreciation and so going back to uh the topic huh the public spaces huh we have many la, starting with this la, speaking in yes. public la. now i'm so i'm, I'm so glad la, uh, in many ways for example singapore they are very very strict in their enforcement you know it's a, mm. a fine if you to spit in public you know so i think that is something where a lot of places can uh, consider uh, uh, replicating because otherwise it's, it's just social discipline or Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. oh this is one is touchy Renika I know this one is personal to you because I, I followed your post mm-hmm. and I understand that you had experience about this not mm-hmm. letting people exit the lift before entering <laughs> not only the, the lift even public transports trains or even entrances yeah. the door sometimes you know it's not the sliding door yes. you still have to open right yeah and yes. You know, sometimes you, you, you're you're carrying things, or you have a young child with you. You name it, lah. You name it, lah. It's just very. I, I, I saw. I saw a video on, on Facebook. This guy, he opens the door. He was about to go out, and then he saw, suddenly saw a lady coming in, coming out. So he hold the door for the lady, for the lady to go out first. The lady just walk out without, you know, saying thank you, without acknowledging that he's holding the door for him you know what he did close the door he go and pull the lady back open the door again push her into the back where she come from she opened he opened the door and he go out on his own just what? to teach that lady you know <laughs> manners uh, that's, that's a bit extreme but okay yes. yeah yes. very extreme yes. so but still yeah it's just common sense and also some of the things that really annoys me especially these yes. days right it's getting more and rampant these days is that you know sometimes when you are already in the lift okay you may be alone and clearly the lift is so big and empty enough for the next few people uh to come in wherever that uh, whichever floor the lift stops at and then the you know thing and then the door open and you see some fillers over there right just because it's, they saw that i was in it they don't want to come in mm. since when wow. elevators and lifts are private spaces you cannot share space mm-hmm. with people in the lift uh. Uh, you can do or not in the lift. Hi, yeah. Just before but, they come in, you can do or not. <laughs> so when the door oh, opened, wow. the smell just came rushing out. I mean, you know? it'll be another funny. thing about it'll be, elevator. It'd be funny. Another that thing about elevator. Yes. Yeah, another ahead. thing about the elevator is what you know. Empty, but they stand very close to the control button. And then you know they don't even hold the the, the yes. door or close the door it's just like yes yes like, and, like, and, yes, there, right? and then you know obstructing others to press whichever floor button that they need they just can't move away from that uh control button and again it's another you know so there we go just talking about lifts alone i see how many stuff that we, we already developed already yes. right so Yes. Um, yes. Okay. So some of the things. So anyway, Sidney kind of agrees with you. Yeah. Uh, we have some Chinese friends here. Okay. But generally, this is what we observe. But I'm pretty sure that there are still some uh, uh, good ones, right? Not all are bad apples. But generally, yeah. yeah. You know, Sidney agrees that they push joke places. Uh, so mm-hmm. yeah. Oh well. And even about the queuing uh, issue earlier, right? Yes. Excel kind of. Uh, poke fun yes. at a real incident. I think recently, for those of you who yes. follow the news, there were some Porsches, uh, Singapore number plates, were asked to uh, uh, re-queue because they cut queue on the way back into Singapore from uh, one of the uh, checkpoints in Malaysia. So even Porsches cannot cut queue. Oh, okay. And this, yeah. Even this luxury car, tailgating, run through the, the toll gate of the car in front so that they don't have to pay for the toll that's stupid you know yeah that's stupid 
uh, and it's happening in uh, in Malaysia as well. We, we see I I've seen it on YouTube. You know, uh, I just don't know why. Is it because that you know their touch and go uh, do not have enough credit? Uh, yeah, that's the least of the problems, can I mean, there's always yes. Uh, the the toll is right there. You read the toll. I'm pretty sure the toll mm. will have some form of way for you to top up, right? Even yes. though you're not using the new NFC card. Right, yeah. but no, you want to tell people just to save a few bucks, like, hmm. on, uh, yeah. So, yeah, cancel lah. This one they really cancel. I think bodo, not just cancel, cancel until bolo eh. Mm, that, yeah, that's not akal, you know. Mm. So, annoyances in public spaces. There are many, many more. In fact, this yes. topic right, is the longest topic for tonight's show. Before we even mm. go to other. Uh, areas and mm. this is what uh, Selena also mentioned previously. She wrote about it. She called them loud casters, playing yes. music or video loudly in public spaces, not just in MRT. But I agree with you, Axel. I mean, having stayed in Singapore for 10 good years, I mm. have experienced that before. A bit annoying, uh, right? What happened to all mm. those yes. new food stand, right? Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yellow. Ah, Jiatong. Can you relate to this? Yeah, I've been interrupting you. No, you're having a verbal sparring me, and there's a reason why. Because mm -hmm. we are, we're going to visit what are the annoyances between the past and the present later on. But that's mm -hmm. different. But you find, yeah. okay, first of all, have you ever encountered anybody who dare interrupt you? Anybody brani to interrupt Li Yatong? Ada. Ada. <laughs> Ada. At home, I get interrupted very frequently. So those fellas made it to tell a tale. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think this is also one. Uh, like, uh, that one who and the worst thing is if you interrupt to ask question, you know, to clarify, fine. I think that is good. But this is interrupting to show his stride, to show that, you know, he is the loudest, the smartest the mm. cleverest in the room you know uh, that one can really piss people off they all say that he need to have his yeah he need to have his two cents of opinion uh. <laughs> two cents <laughs> you gotta have a last say la, so to speak la, yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah 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 okay yes. i got it i got it so uh Sharon, Sharon Xiao. There are two Sharons mm -hmm. with us here tonight, Sharon Tan and Sharon Xiao. So this is Sharon Xiao uh, speaking over hands-free in public. Um, yeah, I also find it very hard to understand. I struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, I can relate to, let's say, if you're on a handset, right, and you speak loudly. And uh, I, I, that, to me, I find that still forgivable because it depends on the severity of the conversation, uh, what kind of... Uh, 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 urgency it may carry hence translates mm. into the the intensity of the person's voice during the call but mm -hmm. over hands-free speaker mm. i think you you can always take that call in, in, in into private uh private space just excuse yourself from the public space and then take the call away from others so that you know if you think that you need that clarity in terms of volume to, to, to listen carefully. Yeah, just mm. excuse yourself. Yeah. Mm. And when you are done with the call, come back. You know, it's perfectly fine. Mm. Sharon okay. Tan got a very good point, you know. Blocking wheelchair access. Yes. Oh, yes. And Sharon yes. has uh, her personal experience with this. And yeah, yeah. yeah. this is something, yeah. again, boils down mm. to discipline or at least the awareness of the mm. general public uh, sometimes uh, we, we, it's debatable uh, it's chicken and egg uh, mm. so you, may, you may argue but if mm. there are times where it is what it is really then wouldn't the next uh, uh, potential consideration is to ensure there is enforcement you know uh, again going back to using Singapore as an example Singapore is also known with the nickname of being a fine city very fine mm. lots of fine yes. <laughs> but I find that there is a oh hang on I didn't do it purpose but I found that you know that there is a, a purpose and practicality on that you know mm. so why not you see? it's happening quite randomly uh, in Malaysia Dana 
Malaysia is not an exactly the most disabled friendly countries where there are yes. a lot of facilities are not accessible and when there is access access to it you know and this happens yeah hmm. how about and, standing in the parking lot to book the parking lot itu banyak babio seriously <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> Good. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever, yeah. uh, have you guys ever, you know, encountered that before? Especially in a, a, a shopping mall. Shopping mall. Yes. Uh, I personally ha ha have not, but I've seen mm -hmm. videos yes. being circulated on WhatsApp. Yes. Or yes. One hour. The Charlie Gado, mm -hmm. no, really one. Hour. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one is one car taking up two parking lot. Huh. Ah. This one. This one. Let me show an example. This actually happened. Okay. Hmm. Now, uh, I've already blanked out the, the number, number plate. plate. Allah, uh, cannot buy KTM lah. Uh, you can, I, I, I can give you later. Okay. Okay, okay, later. okay. 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 <laughs> Have a look. Have a look. Hmm. This actually happened at my workplace. Now, just for oh. context, right? If you look, if you look at the bottom uh, picture, uh, you will see that there is already a sign that you know the parking is reserved. Okay, mm -hmm. and then if you look at the left hand side, uh, sorry, uh, the, the top corner of the uh, top picture, uh, you will see another lot. So basically, this Suzuki Swift Hall is parking mm -hmm. taking up two spaces. You know, mm -hmm. okay, you see, uh, maybe there's emergency or what? Uh, okay, fine, uh, I understand. Mm -hmm. If you need to park, you need to park more. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, just lower down the barrier and take the parking. Then at mm -hmm. most hall, you just leave your phone number on your dashboard. I think that's yes. fair, lah, right? It's still yeah. acceptable. You already give the courtesy for people to contact you knowing that you park mm -hmm. at a private uh, allocated car park. But no, yes. this fella did what they did. Mm -hmm. You look at that. Take a look. Mm -hmm. you know, I think picture speaks a thousand words. So, ah. Uh, Yalah, ya Tom. Yes. Macam you kata lah. Nah, itu betul-betul betul-betul hmm. babi jalan. Seriously, saya tak nak tahan. Yeah, hmm. two spaces. Yes. Two spaces. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, yes. Lah. And the uh, worst thing is you you are driving in in an area that is so difficult to get a parking and all. And suddenly you saw a parking space. You were oh ah, you are happy. And then suddenly say shit, this guy parked too slow. So um. Yeah, you know that uh, ah, this Sharon Tan, you don't kind of be funny or you think the sticker be in the club. You pick, mean what? Mean spark mana mana. Who teach you one? No. Can be funny, this woman. <laughs> so, we're still at the uh, topic of uh, uh, annoyances in public spaces. Okay, I'm just going to go through a few uh, just to speed things up here a little bit. So, in cinemas alone, we can, we already have two. Putting feet up. Okay, in front of the, in front of you, it doesn't matter whether the, the, the seat's empty or not. And as, uh, and also talking loudly in the cinema. Yet Tom mentioned uh, one earlier of narrating the movie to someone on the phone or something like that. Yes. Like, wow, itu betul -betul tak boleh. Right. And then uh, also in public spaces, especially in queues or maybe in open spaces, you're standing too close to someone. So the lack of respecting the other person's personal space. You know, so this one also is uh, quite a touchy topic, especially we're now in a post-pandemic times, you know, and those were the days during the lockdown, we were encouraged to practice social distancing, right? So, yeah, I mean, at least uh, at arm's length, you know, an arm's length is not that far or near, it's mm -hmm. still, you know, an arm's length, that's a meter all. La. A meter lah, a meter lah. You know, sometimes you can even feel the breath uh, behind your neck uh, when you're curious, like, oh, that's annoying. And um, no offense to this group of people, it's salespeople. What do you think? Have you encountered uh, salespeople in the uh, shopping complexes, for example? Yeah, Tom? Mm -hmm. Credit card sales? Yes, you yes of course. Ones? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know like, I try yeah. to once again, yeah, you know, it's your yes. KPI, you feel target, but a bit mm -hmm. too pushy, like um, they wholesale, right? So that's. Yes. No, no. Way too pushy, you know. Following you, you, you tell them really, no, I, I have enough, I'm I don't need it. And as you walk, he continue following you, tell getting you, trying to just 
get you to say yes to him ah uh, that one mm-hmm. betaha yeah. Yeah, credit card sales uh-huh. again. No offenses to uh to those in the credit card sales line, but just be aware, okay? Uh, we're not yeah. uh, humanizing you. And uh, yeah. last few one in public spaces. Uh, let's talk about public toilets. Oh, I don't know about ladies, but I can speak for the jantan. So sometimes you go in. Uh, I can think of three. One. If the urinal by the wall is occupied, then clearly you look for the cubicle, all right? Mm. So sometimes even the the door is closed because the the door is pushed to close. What I mean, you can only rely on the mm. the sign whether is it vacant or occupied, ma. So if mm. it's green, mm. might just push the door. Also, that's that. Bloody mm. hell, something like that. That's definitely is there mm. doing his business, whether standing up facing you or facing the other wall. Facing mm. you one, then you have a bit of trauma lah, like, mental health to take mm. a kid lah, can? Oh, be come on, lock the door lah. Like. Yeah, so maybe I can also empathize. Sometimes they forgot, but there are those who didn't have the balls uh, or the lack of it uh, to mark you or no. Say hello. Mm. How I know right? Lock the door lah. Mm-hmm. So how about the door man? You can't be for not. Yes, and the worst another thing is I I hate it when I see footprint on the squatting uh, on the seat, toilet seat. They oh. don't clean up after and then yes they 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 yes. squat on the toilet seat yeah. which is men. Yes. To avoid you from squatting in the first place, to give you the yes. comfort, you know, and yes, uh, uh, anyway. and flush, yeah. please. Yeah. You don't need yes. brownies. It's okay. Yes, the first <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. So these are some annoyances in public spaces we can think of. Okay. So and Prema has got a response to you, Yatong. You get yes. <laughs> At home because wives are way ahead than husbands. E, which I'm biased near. Betul ke? Hmm. Hmm. Betul juga lah. Hmm. <laughs> okay lah, okay lah, fine. We do not want to die. We love our wives, so let's move yes. on. This treacherous yeah. waters, walking on thick shells. So, hey, let's go with annoyances on the road. I mentioned one of them earlier. Not mine. That happens. Quite frequently in my daily life, right? So, how's the driving habits in Australia while we wait for our friends to drop in there on the road? Oh, driving Australia is really uh, a joy, a luxury. If you have already driven in Malaysia, in the sense that uh, when you are in in Australia, when you drive, the moment you put on your signal that you need to change lane, the car at the back will just slow down, give way to you. You know, in Malaysia, you put your signal that you need to change lane. <laughs> the the accelerator, accelerator, yes, close up the gap for you. Totally different. So I okay. think they are more cultured in terms of you know they are behind the wheel. Okay. So right. yeah, I think this is one of the biggest uh, 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 differences I see when I drive in Australia and uh, when I'm in uh, Malaysia. You know, okay. Because fair enough. You, we are in passion in Malaysia, whereas in Australia they are very passion. They allow you. So you, so long as you have your indicator on, they will just let you have the way abroad, and then mm. the traffic just move on. And I think this is also one of the reason why there is not much of a traffic jam, because everybody is willing to give way. So you become orderly. You become systematic. The flow just get going. Understand. Unlike us, yeah. And and you know? and uh, would that also translate to less, um, you know, heated moments on the road of you yes, know definitely square definitely. miles, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. I mean, I've I've driven in Australia before Perth as well, uh, but I cannot compare because I was there for a holiday, uh, just for a week and rented a car. Like clearly, I. Cannot compare to you having lived there and experiencing how is it like as a local there as a residency. So, mm. but okay. Uh, case in point, the other thing that I find that uh, in fact a few things that are that really mm-hmm. explode on the road is uh, tailgating, which you mentioned earlier already. Uh, yes. Yeah, that is such a dangerous behavior uh, on the road, and I just mm-hmm. don't understand why. You know, I mean mm-hmm. if. Uh, but of course, it's also kind of uh, uh, two-way street. Then the other argument is that you know, 
But that guy or that woman, the car in the front, is taking up hogging the fast lane, driving so slow. Uh, so, mm-hmm. it, so here's the thing: two wrongs don't make a right, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Uh? Mm-hmm. Yes. But what are, What are the? Uh, uh, hang on, we've got some comments coming in. Let me just take a quick look there. Yeah, mm. drive and throw rubbish out. But the mm. whole power multi <laughs> The road is the is 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 the rubbish dump. The yes. so so yeah, Tom. Just out of curiosity, like, I've seen some YouTube shorts or reels as well. That mm-hmm. you know, uh, some videos, especially the bikers that they have the GoPro on the, the, yes. the helmet, right? They saw some car stop and try to like throwing stuff up, and then the biker just stop next to the car, pick that up, and flick it into the open window. Would you do that, yeah, Tom? I may. <laughs> If I see one, I may. I may do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's annoying. It's really annoying. Yes. yes. Really. It doesn't yes. mean that you have a car. You have the, uh, you know, the entitlement to litter uh, everywhere else, but keep your car yes. clean. Isn't it? And yes. speaking of which, as well. Now this is great, but I also feel that it uh, requires some sense of awareness. You know, it's not wrong when you're driving and you're smoking. And mm. smokers can relate to this, uh, where they wind down the window and they just hang their their their, their hand, holding mm-hmm. a cigarette, right? Just let the but. But here's the thing: it's actually quite a nuisance to motorcyclists. I've actually yeah. heard my friends, yeah, because the the the, mm. the, the, the meshes, right? Yes. You know, get into the eyes. Yes. Expect and some more, you know lah. The regular motorcyclists, not all helmets have got visors. One, even though you don't get out the face or so, right, you get out your hand or what, mm. it still burns. Right? Yes, that's mm. also something I never realized because I don't smoke. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. my friend who was uh, who was riding had a strong point lah in that sense lah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Chris, let's see, left lane. No longer the slow lane. It is now the middle lane on a three-lane highway. Mm. The latest rule. Mm. In Malaysia, Absolutely. highways are two lanes: uh, the fast lane and the slow lane. There's a third, which is supposedly the emergency lane. Mm. But uh, we've seen uh, it has been abused for non-emergency. Uh, yes. as well just for the sake of cutting mm-hmm. queue so yeah that's yes. the one right in fact yeah so what else oh yeah this is this is one of my uh uh favorite that i would love to actually make fun of all the time is mm-hmm. turning without signaling Signal. without using mm-hmm. the, the you know here's the indicator thing. Mm. how you obviously have encountered that before right that tongue always Good. always right So mm. here's it. You know, my uh, funniest thought in my mind is that if I can actually uh, uh, try to guess and get myself into the head of the driver in front of me to figure out where he or she is going to turn, I might as well try to figure out what my wife is thinking in her in her mind. Huh? Happiest yes. husband in the world, isn't it? Yes. I mean, <laughs> right? Mind-boggling that you 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 have to 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 be put at risk. By that driver in front of you who just turn at his will and fancy without indicating that he wants to turn. Yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. So, mm. for those of you who are still with us here, all right, we are already at 8:53 uh, p.m. coming to the close of tonight's show. What are your thoughts of all these annoyances? Are they familiar to you? Have you encountered them before? What would mm. you have done differently? Would you have done something that to avoid it or educate the rest? I don't know. Let us know what you think. You and see, when when you when you slow down and you have to stop the car in Australia, you must be able to see the rear tire of the car ahead of you. If you oh. can't see the tire ahead of of the car in front of you, then you are too close. Makes sense. Makes yeah, sense. because. So that when the car stop and can't start, you still have enough space to turn out by giving out your indicator, either left or right, and then you can just move off. 
and you don't hold up all the traffic at the back. So there is this distancing that is required when you drive in Australia. When the car comes to a stop, you must be able to see the tire of the car in front, the rear tire that's of the car in front. That's a fair bit of space, yes. at least, in order to yes. see the rear wheel, right? Yes, so, yes. And that's not too much to ask for. Yes. So it becomes more wheel, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I cannot... I, what I cannot understand is in, in Malaysia, now we are targeting, as I read in the news, car that would be fine if you don't stop at the white line, at the traffic light. But they are not finding all those motorbikes who jumps the red light. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know? uh, it's just because apparently, apparently, uh, hmm. Jumping the red light or beating the red light is no longer a compoundable offence. What it means is that it's no longer an offence that uh, warrants a fine issued on the spot, but mm. you'll be issued a uh, a court hearing date. Uh, you go to court. Oh, well, of court matter. Oh, they're right. You're still seeing it, especially the the the, the A know. lot lah. It's not. Yes. It doesn't seem to deter anyone on that, but maybe yes. it's again. There was a difference during uh, festivities, like uh, during the elections, the state elections, Chinese New Year's, Raya, mm. where the police will increase their their ops, right? Yeah. Do the ah, then mm. uh, I, I did feel a sense of uh, improvement, you know, where there's mm -hmm. clearly there are more presence of the traffic police. But after that, yes. after that, macam biasa saja, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Last one, okay, just to uh, wrap things up here. So clearly there will be annoyances all along as we move on, as you know, we go into uh, different ages. So Yat Tong clearly is uh, a different generation for me and of me. I'm not entirely, I'm not exactly the youngest as well. So I've seen a fair share of uh, annoyances and pet peeves uh, in between. And of course, today we are now in a social media age. So, what are the annoyances that uh, any one of you can uh, relate to previously that you can recall during your childhood days versus what you can see today, right? We would like to hear it from you. Yeah, Tong, what are the common ones that uh, irked you during your younger days? I think the biggest difference for me between growing up today and growing up during my time is the entitlement the mindset you know of entitlement so you know nowadays uh, it's very much individualism so when it's very much individualism they think that what they did or what they are doing is acceptable to them because that is my right i'm entitled mm -hmm. to do it you know whereas for us we look at is the societal uh, requirement, how we fit in into the society, how should we behave while we are in the society. So in that sense, you know, when we, when I was growing up at my age, you know, we are always very much a part of society. We we can be very knuckle, but when come to, you know, fitting into the society, we know our place. We are never an individual. Whereas today I see, they, you know, people tend to be much more individual. They feel that that is their right, so they go for it, and that's mm. what they want it, and that's how they should have it. So in that sense, you know, there's this uh, uh, cross cultural and also generation uh, 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 differences of how it was in the past and how it is now. That's how I view it, you know. Mm. Mm. So sometimes it it can be very confusing, but you know people like me seeing the younger ones you know how they behave and 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 how they expect things to be done you know yeah mm -hmm. uh yeah. i can relate and maybe let me bridge that all right uh it wasn't too long ago that uh none of us had mobile phones it was something that was not uh the norm and those who have a mobile mm -hmm. phone is probably uh, as big as this tumbler the old yes. motorola brick phone you know if you know what i mean yes uh, that was way back in the late 80s early 90s and uh, oh, then the smaller ones that we know of 
maybe as big as uh, maybe half the size, maybe half the size, uh, came at the mid to late 90s before Y2K, before year 2000, right? So those were the days where if you're lucky, you have a landline at home. That's all that you've got, right? Privacy was not a thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because your phone belongs to the family. Typically, it's in yeah. the uh, uh, living room. A bowl. Then you've got to go out and mm. use the public phone. So here's uh, where I can relate to what you said as well. You have long not being entitled. So the public phone, for example, is on a first, uh, on a first come first serve basis, right? So if there's someone there, you just have to wait, lah. But also this is where you know the sense of entitlement. Just because you're there already doesn't entirely give you uh, the the notion of just hogging the phone all along. Although at that time, there never was a law or act to say that it's wrong, but again, it was a social etiquette problem. Yes. Right. Hogging and, a treadmill in a gym is typical, common. Not just treadmill. If you talk about gym, then I think it's basically any equipment you can find in the gym because it's a public yes. space. Wow. Yes. You know? Mm. Yeah, 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 that that too. So I don't think we have to look at current. I think the current generation. I think the entitlement problem already began uh, even during my childhood days, and maybe it's just so different now that we see yes. it more prominently. You know, uh, I think here yeah. it's more pronounced now. The entitlement. Yes, mm. more pronounced now. You know. Yeah, uh, my days it could be you know uh, most of us are poor, so that that sense of entitlement was very subtle, you know. So it, it wasn't so glaring, I would say, in terms of uh, when I was growing up in my younger days, the entitlement. Right. Yeah. Well, okay. So uh, of course, presently uh, there's a new set of uh, uh, annoyances. Uh, being too judgmental, right? Uh, and very, very driven by different schools of thought, uh, influenced by social media, whether or not there is actually evidence that supports validate, validating either sides. For example, we're still in October, the month of uh, well being. Let's talk mental health. When you talk mental health, people will be thinking, oh, are you nuts? Are you losing it? Or, you know, are you going through something? So, you see, there's different levels of mental health. Both Yatong and I, we are both certified first aiders, mental health first aiders. But we dare not say that we know uh, everything about it. We are just at the tip of the iceberg and how there is. We are not counsellors or even uh, practitioners to address it. The point I'm trying to address here is that it's sad to see that uh, whenever some people uh, reaches out for help labels start flying labeling you weak you know, uh, you know suck it up you know, stuff like that whereas of course we here we are we are, we are trying to not demonize people who reaches out it takes a great amount of strength and uh, faith in oneself to actually mm -hmm. be that vulnerable so it's annoying I think. yeah right true very true Leveling, now, yes. Now that's pretty much what we're trying to deliver, and we are clearly past the broadcast end time already. But tonight's episode is not just meant to poke fun and uh, make jokes out of each and every one of our pet peeves and annoyances. Yes, it was fun, you know, mm -hmm. just yeah. uh, creating topics out of it. But there's also a silver lining. Now that we know what rubs us off in the wrong way, what can we do not to be those pet peeves ourselves? Because like I said yes. earlier, each and every one of us have got different level of tolerance to uh, each uh, annoyances, different levels, yeah. no right or wrong, isn't it? So with that said, we are just hoping to uh, create a bigger awareness of social etiquette and manners if you want to combine it with some other words such as courtesy mm. or chivalry by all means and yeah. the whole idea here is uh for us to find ways to live harmoniously instead of finding fault with one another yes. don't you agree because yes. if imagine we 
Yat Tong and I, just because we are from different generations, he thinks he's better because he is older than me. I've seen it. I eat more salt than you, young man. Die, long kapu. Yes. Now, right. Yep. So, Yat Tong, thank you so much again for joining Welcome. us all the way. Thank you Canada. for 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 having me with yeah. you. Yes, and it was always fun. So, for our friends who have tuned in comes here yes. thank you so much for being with us and uh, and uh, all the comments very very valid comments yes yeah yes. yeah yeah mm-hmm. so That's, we really hope you yes. find something positive in that yes. okay i think we so, learned a lot from the comment too yes we discover yeah. Yeah. thank you once again have a good mm-hmm. night everyone and yes. uh be kind and take care wherever you are bye yes. bye now. bye bye from now